Okay, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, we're gonna have to sit down for this one because the Apple Card just came out specifically for savings. The savings account that can offer you something no bank can give you. 4.1% year over year. Now, this is beating competition by 5, 10, X the amount, or dare I say, we move and we look at something that is giving you a once in 20, 30 year opportunity and may actually do triple of what the Apple card may do. And I'm not talking about a scam shill or anything in between, hear me out, because Apple is not as good as they sound. Now first, what I'll say is the Apple card savings account, it's gonna be awesome, I'm not gonna lie. If you compare it to anyone else out there, the savings rate, it's the best you're gonna get. Okay, and if they're doing something that's kind of like shooting themselves in the foot if you really think about what's happening. So from that viewpoint, it's interesting. It's almost 5%. It's really like it's kind of astounding to look at. Now, obviously, as you can see, we're not at 5%, but we're, we're close. We're close. We're at 4.15. It's good. APY unheard of. So over the course of the year, you're going you're to make that much on your money. But this is where things get interesting because why are they doing this? You have banks falling out. You have banks tightening credit restrictions and you have to wonder why are they doing this now they released the apple card about two three years ago it's been okay goldman sachs the bank that's behind it is losing money on repeat however apple has decided they're going to go their own route they're going to basically become a little bit of a bank of their own and separate ties with goldman eventually but the question is why are they doing this and this is where i think people aren't taking into account the issue that I believe Apple is becoming aware of. Now, smart businesses, they pivot. Smart businesses, they look at X, Y, and Z. They don't just focus on one thing with tunnel vision. For instance, we look at something like Intel. Intel does the same thing, and they've done the same thing for like 20 years, and they've done nothing else. They've stagnated, and their stock looks terrible. You look at something like NVIDIA, you have your graphics cards, and then they went into AI, and then they went into EV, and they're in everything. They're diversifying, they're growing. That's a good company. But Apple, Apple is one of these good companies, but they're also a mega cap, and mega caps like to flex. But what mega caps don't like to flex is their losses and what's really happening behind the scenes. Mac shipments collapse 40% year over year on declining demand. Because even during this time, you have big banks, big concerns, big investors highlighting some of these major issues. And this was in January, so it's been a little bit of time. But the Apple price target of concerns over demand weakness and the slowing service growth. This was a foreshadowing. We knew this was going to happen. We talked about this a lot. These are things that are not surprising. Mac is slowly declining. And if you do remember, if you do remember over a year ago from 2020 into 2022, this was their top selling product. And honestly, I was watching earnings from like the previous year and I was in awe and I was in shock. We're going into recession. Stocks are getting destroyed. People are, you know, some were losing their jobs. Some were just obviously getting more and more employment going crazy. But it was interesting. People were paying more for everything and we continue to buy these products. But then you start to see the issue on wine with max shipments declining through the roof. And now we're seeing wages tightening, right? But we're still seeing unemployment, you know, very, very low. And this leads me to what Apple is predicting. They are one, trying to focus more on that credit side of the business. Not only are they trying to get you to buy their products, but now they're trying to get you to use their cards, which I use the Apple card. I'm, there's no problem with the Apple card, the credit card. I, I actually love it. I think credit credit's a good thing. You need to be building your credit. Now, do I spend $7,000 a month on that credit card? I do not. I use my credit card usually to pay my bills and then I pay it off. So it just builds my credit. That's how that works typically. Now, when we look at this, Apple, not only are they wanting you to buy their products, they want you to buy other products through them while you owe them as well because through this last four years previous before biden right and this is i'm i'm neither republican nor democrat i am a capitalist i love making money in the markets that's my priority right now and when you look over the past four years something trump did was very interesting to stimulate the economy prior to covid what he did was get consumer spending and this got us into this habit of always wanting to have because we deserve it because we work for it we need we need we need 
and it worked. It worked. Our economy thrived. It was very bullish. We continued going up. We bounced back after COVID immediately because we encouraged spending, right? And that's what we did. And over the next few years, our savings rate reached all time lows. Ne never, never in history, right? We said, look, savings, terrible. Spending, mucho buenos nachos. And as we look at this number, it should really shock you. We were down from 7.3% a year earlier. It's lowest since July 2005 when the rate was 2.1%. And we were at 2.3% in December. And this rate continues to drop. Okay, it's going down, down, and down. It's something that the media doesn't want to talk about. And I know you're like, Tyler, I just asking, should I be saving? Should I should I be using the Apple savings account? And if your goal is to save, then then maybe, maybe that's your goal. If you want to dump your money, forget it's there, do your nine to five, and move on with your life and buy a house hopefully in 10 years, go for it. It could be good. Is it going to last? It probably won't. It probably won't stay at this high of a rate. You need to understand that. But while it does last, you'll be a happy camper. However, if you're like me, a risk taker, you live life on the edge. Fortune favors the brave. But you're looking for maybe a not risky investment, but something that can bring you more gains. Typically how I look at the market. So what if you could bet on the entire market? And you, you hear this from everyone. But the question here is not... Are we going to, you know, pump? Am I going to make you a million overnight? Is this going to make you rich? No. The question is, what has always worked, right? What continues to beat the 4.19, whatever the hell percent? Now, you can go all the way back to 1958 if that's really what you want to do to see the overall gains on the S&P 500. Now, I don't want to focus on 1958. I want to focus on the last 10 years, give you the most realistic viewpoint. Now, what I will say is the biggest downside that we had was back in 08. You can see that was 36% and that would be terrible. I get it. But overall, you continue to outperform, you know, marking highs of 26%, highs of 32%, highs on 29 and 28%. Okay. Over and over and over. Even recently with our major dip, it's only 18% down, which comes out pretty strong overall time and time again. And again, the more impressive part is when you start diving into this, you can get a better visual from 2013 into 2022, the past 10 years, you're gonna get an average gain at over 13% per year. That's just averaging in, which is almost triple the amount of what you're getting with something like the Apple card. So I say all that to say this, if something's usually too good to be true, think a little bit more about it. Think twice or maybe three times. Now, I'm not saying this is a bad deal. And if you're going into any savings or anything like that, then yes, this is the best bang for your buck. But if you're a risk taker, if you're looking for an edge, if you're actually looking to make some money on this in even a shorter period of time rather than 10, 15 years, I will say the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, the VU, a lot of these sectors provide more value. When's the last time the market dipped 40, 30%? When was the last time the average American was available to become an investor with safe, longer term results? Now, am I saying the spy is going to take you to the moon? Am I saying the spy won't drop tomorrow a little bit? I'm not saying that. But will it outperform the Apple card? Dare I say it will.